Hello and welcome back to CycleFab. I'm Larry. In this video, I'm going to show you how to safely pressurize a motorcycle gas tank and check it for micro leaks. Now, let me explain what micro leaks are. Those are tiny, tiny pinholes that really do not show up until the tank is under pressure in operation of riding down the road. That's the only time you will experience a leak. Just sitting stagnant, it won't leak. Anyway, in this video, I'll show you how to figure that out before you spend and waste a lot of time and money finishing and painting a tank. So keep watching and I'll show you how to do this. Okay, the first thing you're going to want to do is make one of these right here. Now that simply is nothing more than a two-part gas cap, pop-up gas cap. And you can get these things on eBay, like 20 bucks, a little bit under, a little bit over. but it, all you do is pop a little roll pin out right there and this comes out and leaves you with just a empty hole then you get a male chuck air hose chuck and JB welded in that's it uh, and these even with the little rubber gasket on the back side of course you leave that that's all you need to seal the top of this tank in order to hook the air hose up to it to pressurize your tank now you will have to seal other outlets on the bottom side of your tank in order to keep it from you know the fluid just hey guys i hope you're liking this video uh if you are please give me a thumbs up please stay to the end it gets really exciting and subscribe to my channel okay before you throw pressure to your tank what you need to do is turn your regulator down i turn mine down to uh, around 40. and the reason for that is you do not want to be throwing 120 pounds of compressed air into your tank that could be extremely damaging um, you, you don't need 120 psi 40 will work just fine if you put too much in there well bad things can happen uh, you can rupture your tank uh, weak spots in it it could be a number of things I've never had a problem with it 40 psi works great so just stick with that you should be just fine well I've got our tank filled with water dyed red that's so the camera and you guys can see it a little bit better. Now, the first thing we did, if you remember, is we fixed up a old gas cap or a new two-piece gas cap. It's very well worth buying one, spending 20 bucks if you're going to be doing a lot of tank work. Now, we've taken that, we've converted it over to accept an air hose. We've got our regulator set at 40 PSI. Again, do not run 120 PSI in your tank. You can damage it, really. You don't need to run any more than 40. So, tank's filled, plugged up on the bottom, of course, no water leaking out. And we screw this in, and you just need to get this hand tight. You don't have to put a wrench on it or anything like that. Now, let's have some fun, see how much of a mess we can make. Yeah, we got water, all right. <laughs> uh, you could probably see it from way over there where I have the camera setting. It just spewed water out the back. Now, <laughs> I did not have one of my bottom plugs in very well. So I uh, ended up getting drenched, which is okay. Now, you want to have a pen with you, a marker. So you can mark where you saw this water spewing out at. Now, I have done this previously uh, before I set the camera up, so I already know where it's leaking at. Now I just put two little hash marks. There's some options about this. You can weld the tank up or you could use a sealer. Now on this particular one, I'm going to use a sealer. The reason being is because of where the leak is. It's in a place that's very thin and my welding technique I'm not so sure about. I don't want to risk it. I'm a pretty good okay welder. 
but I've got too much invested in this tank right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and go with the sealer. Now, the sealer I'll be using is a Caswell product. I've never used it before, and it's a two-part epoxy. I hear a lot of really good things about it. Now, I did a video earlier about a tank that had rust in it and how to get the rust out, and I was going to use the Caswell on it. It didn't need it, so I didn't see why I waste it. This tank obviously needs it, so you'll be seeing me use Caswell on this. Okay, the reason why the video ended so abruptly is because I wanted to show you guys exactly what happened. That was not a plug that blew out. It was the bottom of the tank blowing out. You can see right there on this weld, this crease, this corner, that's what popped out. The text that you saw earlier in the video, well, that was uh, me warning you to stay until this part and do not use 40 PSI. The text that you saw earlier in the video, that's the reason why I put it there. I want, wanted to get you guys to finish watching this video and show you what exactly 40 PSI can do to a tank. Now I've done, I don't know, between six and 10 tanks of modified. Now I haven't split every one of them. I just modified them, worked on them, painted them, just the normal stuff, okay? But I pressure checked every one of them. This one, I actually cut in half and welded back together. Now, that was not one of my welds that broke. That was a factory weld. Now, did I get into the weld when I was refinishing the tank? Yeah, sure I did, a little bit. Maybe too much, I don't know. But I'm not gonna bad mouth the tank manufacturer. I was using too much pressure. 20 PSI should be fine. I am not ever going to go above that. I just want to let you guys know and to learn from my experience and my cost, which I've got a lot of time in this tank. The tank, just as it was, cost $365. Uh, and <laughs> anyway, doesn't matter. That's how we all learn. We all learn through experience, and sometimes it can cost quite a bit, sometimes not so much. I've got down here two videos I'd like you guys to watch, and I'll be seeing you guys in a few more days. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. Bye.